Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Grim Dawn Newcomer's Guide. We're going to be taking a long, hard look at the Inquisitor today and his little shooty boy companions known as ranged weapons. Before we begin, though, do yourself a favor and feel free to like, comment, subscribe your heart out because that is the thing that I need to tell you because this is a YouTube thing, probably. But anyway, don't feel like you have to play with just ranged weapons for the Inquisitor. Even though it is very, very good with the character, you shouldn't feel like you don't have the freedom to go for melee weapons. It may not be the most prevalent set of abilities for you, but you know what? Live your life. Nobody's going to tell you not to pick up a sword if you want to pick up a sword. Uh, now let's get on with the show. The Inquisitor's very first active ability is called Word of Pain. And if you remember the Occultist's ability called Curse of Frailty, you have a good grip on how this ability operates. The big difference is that Word of Pain actually deals damage. It's going to deal fire and cold damage while also slowing attacks for one second. It's nice and spammy in a fairly large AoE. And Word of Pain's first mastery is known as Word of Agony. Super different! From the original baseline ability, right? Word of Agony, Word of Pain, just synonyms for each other. Cool. Agony is going to increase the area of effect of the ability while buffing both fire and cold damage and also adds some flat lightning damage. This mastery also has a chance to blind enemies and will reduce their health regeneration by a percentage. And then Death Sentence is the last mastery for this ability and is going to add flat elemental damage to the mix. It's also going to reduce Pierce, Aether, and Chaos Resistance on targets you hit. So if you'd like to check your notes, we're doing all three of the main elements and adding even more on top of that. Word of Pain gets pretty gross in a good way. So like a stack of pancakes slathered in whipped cream. Definitely appetizing, but you're probably going to wind up with a bunch of shit on your face. The next ability for the Inquisitor is called Storm Box of Elgaloth, and the fact that I didn't butcher that mid-video means that I deserve a gold star. Storm Box will do lightning and electrocute damage while also reducing the defensive ability of the targets that we hit, and this ability is going to arc out to other enemies, causing damage to multiple targets. So the first mastery for this ability is called Allagast's Arcane Net, and this will modify the total damage of the ability by 10%, after the damage mod, we also get a conversion from lightning damage converted to aether damage, and this is a full conversion, so any lightning damage you have on this ability is now going to become aether. You can go on to choose a lightning tether for this ability to attach yourselves to enemies via lightning. If you choose to go this route, you basically have a link between you and the enemy that you've targeted of pure lightning, and it's, it's kind of like a jump rope of lightning. The tether will do damage to things that come in contact with it uh, by both lightning and electrocute damage. And Tether... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, tether also slows, so if you can manage to attach it to an enemy that doesn't immediately combust from the damage, you get a really big line of damage with CC. Super handy for mowing down bad guys. Now, Word of Renewal is going to continue taking us on this journey and is a heal that I would compare to the Nightblade's Pneumatic Burst. The heal is giving both a percentage and flat amount, but beyond that we're also taking less damage from Chthonix and Eldritch enemies. We also get defensive ability, and most importantly for any ranged class, movement speed. Movement speed is... Ooh, movement speed is mega important for kiting and dodging, and no matter what type of ranged build you have, it is a must-have stat. So... Uh, Word of Arms is the first mastery for this ability and is going to remove 6 seconds from the cooldown while also giving us 25% increased energy regeneration. It's only 1 point and nothing but buffs, so it's really hard to argue against getting this one if you have already taken the ability. Vigor is next and is going to add flat health to the healing component of the ability up to a 1000 flat health at max rank. We also get to reduce Freeze, Entrapment, and Petrify duration while the Word of Renewal is going. So this button just gets better and better and better with each progression. Uh, speaking of progression, Steel Resolve is our last stop on this track and is going to give us flat physical damage, buffed physical and elemental damage, 
as well as buffed internal trauma damage. It's going to increase damage to Chthonic and Eldritch enemies with added Aether and Chaos resistance. So every point in this tree, we can really start to compare it to some of the more crazy exclusive skills that we've seen in other classes, like the Star Caller or the uh, the Lightning Caller. All that stuff, Storm Caller, that's what it's called. All that stuff is obviously bonkers in all the stats that it gives you, but this tree for one healing skill is just full of a lot of the exact same crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, it's obviously a steep commitment with all the points that you're going to need to put in, but I can very much say that it feels worth it. Now, the Flames of Ignifar is our next active ability and is actually a channeled ability. So think Aether Ray, but think cool. Got it? Aether Ray except cool. I know it's really hard to fathom, but that's how it kind of works. Flames of Ignifar will basically channel a flamethrower that deals your weapon damage, flat fire, and flat burn damage, and then the range is pretty short, but don't let that stop you. Uh, Tainted Flame is the first modifier for this ability and will convert all fire and lightning damage into chaos and vitality instead. And then... <coughs> Man, I am sorry I'm coughing today. I feel great. I just feel like coughing, apparently. Oh, where were we? All right, so after the conversion is done, we're going to get a 15% total damage modification, making our damage even more nutty on this ability. It's another one-point modifier, but this time I can see not picking it if the damage types don't suit your build, so don't feel pressured into taking it. Intensify is next, which will be adding flat lightning damage and reducing defensive ability for targets hit. This one does increase the energy cost of the ability, but the amount of stuff that you get with it, I'd call it a fair trade. Infernal Purge is a mastery number three and will also be adding more energy cost to this ability, but with that we do get some flat electrocute damage, buffed crit damage, fire damage, and lightning damage. Pure stat boost on this mastery, but since this ability line is a signature for any class that is interested in it, the points go where the points are needed. Endless Flame is going to round us out with buffed burn and electrocute damage with a chance to fumble enemy attacks and a percentage reduction in energy cost for you. If you only take one mastery on this tree, make sure Endless Flame is the one. Reduced energy cost will lead to longer flame throwing, and who would be unhappy with that? Now, our very last active ability has no masteries and definitely feels more like a melee class ability, but Horn of Gandar really can't be understated. The ability itself is an AoE that works off of your weapon damage, has flat piercing damage, and will confuse targets hit for a duration. Confused targets attack other bad guys, which is really helpful when it comes to getting mobs off your knobs, but this ability also reduces enemy damage by a percentage. That duration can last longer or shorter than the Confuse Time, because the Confuse Time actually has a range of duration, which is kind of weird. So even if you roll an unlucky 1.5 second Confusion, the enemies are still going to have 5 full seconds of reduced damage in an area of effect. So I like this one a lot, but I do play it a lot with a melee build in mind, so maybe if you're looking for a ranged build with the Horn of Gandar, you might have to try a little bit harder to make this work. Now, moving on to summons for the Inquisitor. Not beast summons, which I'm sure everyone was hoping for, but summons nonetheless. Uh, Rune of Haggard is your first and acts, uh, acts a lot like a mine. You'll have to set this ability on the ground, and then it'll only activate once stepped on after it has armed, so you can't just slap it on the ground and watch it explode it does have a small wind-up time that you have to get through, and then after that happens, it will fire out projectiles that deal, pierce, deal piercing and cold damage. The projectiles go through enemies, so you don't have to worry about them getting stuck and eaten on big boys. Uh, and then the first mastery for this ability is called Biting Cold. Biting Cold is going to be buffing our pierce and cold damage while slowing the enemy attacks, and then the mastery also comes with a huge reduction in enemy defensive ability, which makes it super advantageous to fight on top of these runes. Take into account that a lot of enemies will run directly at you. It's pretty easy to fight on top of these bad boys, but 
Ultimately, if you're going to be playing a range class, throwing them down and then running on top of them while you kite backwards is also a very good option. If you're going to use them aggressively, make sure that you follow up directly on top of them so that enemies will walk over top of them as well. Enemies go where you are as a player, so you can't expect them to step on your stuff if it is, you know, just being placed under guys who are already dead. <coughs> Damn, it's just going to be that kind of day, isn't it? Mm. Okay, we're good. Chill Surge is the last mastery available and will add additional projectiles to the explosion of the Rune of Haggard. Uh, we also get flat frostburn damage and a chance to freeze, but the increase in missiles that come out of the room is the bi biggest selling point for me. Bigger AoE is always better, and since these runes pierce through things, having more projectiles going in more directions means more people are going to get hit, which is everybody's thing. Hitting people is good. Hitting bad guys is good. Hitting people is probably not great. Rune of Kalistar is active at number six. Sorry about that. It's not actually active. It's a summon. It's summon number two. And uh, will work exactly the same as Rune of Haggard in function. I forgot to mention previously, though, that multiple runes can be placed on the ground, not just of the different types, but you can have two to three runes of Haggard uh, or Kalistar on the ground at any given time. Uh, they actually are extremely, extremely good abilities for clearing monster shrines, especially ones that are a little bit on the tougher side. So you can put the runes down all around the shrine. Uh, I think you can have a maximum of five of each. Is it five or is it three? I can't remember. It's either three or five. But anyway, you can have quite a few on the ground right in front of the shrine, and then you'll click the shrine to life. All the enemies will spawn, immediately explode on top of your mines or your runes, whatever, and die. So it's really, really really good for clearing those shrines and it is a very safe way to do it uh, but back to Kalistar though so the the ability is going to explode into small bombs that deal flat physical and fire damage and they do come with a chance to knock down targets as well so the only mastery for this ability called ignition is going to add a radius to the aoe put on some more flat fire and burn damage and cap it off with a stun against enemies hit so Haggard is going to freeze people, and then uh, Kalistar is going to stun people. Really good stuff from both of them. The only downside to each is the, the tiny wind-up on both, because it can get uh, pretty easy to kill enemies before they are ready to activate. Now, Inquisitor Seal is the next ability that we are just going to slap on the ground. Inquisitor Seal is not a mine. It is instead an AoE field that will take up a moderately large area. When you are in the area, you get uh, damage absorption, increased health regen, and elemental resistance. And that is what's going to affect the player. But as far as the ability is concerned as uh, in terms of enemies you're actually going to deal flat fire damage to enemies that come into contact with the field as well. So the damage is buffed even further against Ethereals, Ethereal Corruptions, Chthonics, and Eldritch enemies. And that means that anybody coming into your field to fight you while you're getting the buffs from your seal are also going to be damaged. So it is really good for both melee and ranged classes because ranged classes obviously want to stand in it, get all the buffs, but melee classes can stand in it, get all the buffs, and take advantage of the damage that it does up close and personally too. Inquisitors hate demons from other worlds. They don't like spirits. They're all about cleansing those monsters. So you'll see a lot of this... Uh, Extra damage versus Chthonics, Eldritch, and Ethereals in their kit. It's pretty cool that it's there, but that's their whole purpose for existence. So it really just on the nose with the lore stuff. <sighs> Mastery number one for this ability is called Null Field. And not only does it sound cool, it's going to reduce the attack and casting speed of enemies while giving you a 25% chance to avoid projectiles while you are in the field. So... Again, really, really good for a melee class, I believe. Uh, still good for range classes because you're going to be avoiding projectiles coming at you while you're in the field. Uh, but if the enemies crowd up on you inside of the seal, it gets a little bit like you have to leave. 
But you can just add up another field, obviously. Maybe you get some pets to go along with your uh, your build that'll tank for you so you can get really better use of the uh, the field. But regardless, so really strong ability and would highly recommend. Uh, Arcane Empowerment is the last mastery and is going to add flat piercing and elemental damage to our seal. We also get crit damage buffed and buffed total damage as well as flat elemental retaliation. So I'd say this is a pretty small investment for a really big payoff on any range class, as long as you're okay with standing in the one spot to do the one thing that your whole kit is built to do. Now dropping down to our passive abilities for the Inquisitor, we meet the ranged counterpart to the Nightblade's dual blades. Ranged expertise is going to let you dual wield ranged one-handed weapons, give them a flat piercing damage, turn around and buff that piercing damage along with your elemental damage, and then add in a whole bunch of attack speed. If you remember from our Alchemist and Soldier videos, there are a couple passives out there that add some elemental options to your autos, and this ability will even uh, further, further push that out. So I think both the Arcanist and the Soldier work really, really strong with auto-based builds when it comes to the Inquisitor, so if you're looking to go that route, Soldier, Arcanist, and Demolitionist are three that come to mind that synergize extremely well. Because the Inquisitor has access to elemental damage on uh, quite a few of his passives, he does synergize very, very strongly with quite a few classes in the game. Most of the Inquisitor passives are uh, one-offs, so there's no masteries to them, but that'll lead us into our next called a Bursting Round. And Bursting Round has a chance to activate when doing so uh, with your autos. The projectile is going to fire out of your gun, and when it does, it is going to hit in an area of effect using your weapon damage, as well as flat physical damage and fire damage. If you're hesitating on this one or any of the upcoming passive skills, just remember that the Inquisitor can attack really fast, so the amount of chance that you'll get to use this ability is actually extremely high. Chilling Rounds is your next option and works very much the same way without the AoE of Bursting Round. Uh, chilling Rounds will use Weapon Damage, Flat Piercing, Cold, and Frostburn Damage, and will freeze the target for just under a second. The freeze time is pretty short, but with enough activations, this passive can keep people nice and frozen very, very far away. Storm Spread is the third passive in our, or fourth passive i suppose in our tree but the third uh shooty passive that we're looking at and i'm sure you've got the puzzle together by now but it's going to be dealing lightning damage piercing and electrocute with weapon damage unlike the previous two abilities storm spread will actually fire off multiple projectiles but it doesn't come with any sort of freeze or aoe uh explosions so every one of these passives comes with their own unique way of approaching the shooties, but having a lightning shotgun is, is always kind of cool. Deadly Aim is the next passive that we've got and comes with a, a CD that is as long as the duration. So the cooldown lasts as long as the ability. Uh, this skill also has a 100% chance of activating. So the cooldown is kind of lost on me, but uh, maybe that's to let enemies interrupt it or, or something to that effect. While this is going, though, you get a uh, a big bonus to your crit damage. You get a bonus to all damage, uh, all damage types, and a percent bonus to offensive ability. This is a very, very big damage spike for the Inquisitor and ultimately leads to a much easier game if you're using auto attacks as your main source of damage. Artifact Handling is the next passive and only works on your two rune abilities, so you have to have either one or both to use it but the passive will remove some of the cooldown from the abilities. It's going to modify their total damage and then boost their crit damage by a pretty significant amount. I'd call it kind of niche if you are deciding to use those runes, but ultimately, if they're playing a big part in your kit, if you're having a lot of fun with those, pick up artifact handling to buff them further. Uh, lastly, on the passive route, we have two abilities that are exclusive. So you can only use one at a time. I'm sure you've picked that up by now. But Aura of Conviction is your first. And as the name implies, it is an aura that will provide flat piercing damage, 
buff, physical, and pierce damage, then go on to up your offensive ability as well. Uh, there are some defensive stats as well, but you'll get physical resistance, so helping against that internal trauma damage, and a reduction in burn duration. So I'd call this a very well-rounded ability. Uh, Aura of Censure is the other option, however, and is going to add some flat fire damage and burn damage. Censure also gives you a chance to disrupt targets for a duration, which essentially means that if there are abilities going on, already you can stop them so if we compare that to fumble which prevents abilities from being cast disruption will actively turn off abilities that are already going censure also reduces targets damage and reduces elemental resistance so we can definitely call it the more op uh, offensive option of the two now that is going to do it for the inquisitor everybody a game set match point shooty guy has shot his multiple shots and I can 100% recommend this class as a fun option for any player looking to just point and click their heart out. If you like MOBAs and you like those uh, AD carry type roles where you just move and shoot, then I would highly recommend the Inquisitor because there is a lot of kiting involved with these classes, the range classes that is, and it can get pretty, pretty, uh, I don't want to say intuitive, what is it? In involved can be a pretty involved so huh. using two hand uh sorry using two handed ranged weapons with the inquisitor is a possibility too but ultimately having the uh two one handed weapons means that you can shoot faster and that's really kind of what we're all here for using two ranged weapons and, and getting the attack speed of a madman is unbelievably addictive and will turn even the most unimpressed player into a frothing wild person uh, but that is going to do it for this video today we are just going to join up with basilla at the cult of bismil to end the video out still continuing on with the story if you've been keeping up we are now in the final act of the game after taking out the shapers of flesh in malmouth so this is what would be considered the forgotten gods expansion but that is it I will see you guys next time with the Necromancer. And then next week, we will end it with the Oath Keeper for all of the classes and hopefully be very close to ending the game. But that's it for me. Once again, thanks so much for hanging out. Peace out, everybody.